Adolf Hitler became the Chancellor of Germany in January 1933. He was the leader of the Nazi Party soon after Germany invaded Poland on September 1, 1939. Two days later, Great Britain and France declared war on Germany. The United States has remained neutral during this time. In the Far East, the only powerful, independent, and militarized Asian country was Japan, a small island country having less amount of natural resources. Japan needed more natural resources from their neighboring countries, rubber from Malaya, iron ore from Manchuria, and oil from the Dutch East Indies. But these countries were ruled by Western powers, as the Dutch in the East Indies, the British in Malaysia, and the U.S. in the Philippines. Japan wants to remove Western power from Asia. So it may impose the Greater East Asian Co-Prosperity Sphere, which gives full control to Japan for access to oil and rubber resources from their neighboring countries. Tension between the United States and Japan was rapidly increasing following the invasion of Manchuria in 1931, and then Japan's brutal attacks in China, resulting in the Second Sino-Japanese War fought in 1937. And in September 1940, Japan invaded France-occupied French Indochina. During the same time, Japan signed the Tripartite Pact with Germany and Italy, and became an alliance of Axis power. The United States was unhappy about the Japanese invasion of its neighboring countries. Relationships between Japan and U.S. became unstable. In the same year, the U.S. had ceased the oil exports to Japan. Japan has only one option left, which was to secure the oil supply from the south, the Dutch East Indies. By invading the Dutch East Indies, Japan may take their oil supply again, but there was a big threat. The United States Pacific Fleet had been operated at Pearl Harbor since April 1940. If they destroyed or neutralized the U.S. Pacific Fleet from the Pacific, Japan would have controlled the entire Pacific region. Admiral Yamamoto Izoroku, the commander-in-chief of Japan's combined Navy fleet, had planned the surprise attack on the U.S. Pacific Fleet located at the Hawaiian Island. Yamamoto knows the United States' mighty industrial power and military wartime industries. However, the planning of a surprise attack was begun in early 1941. Vice Admiral Chuichi Nagumo was selected as Commander-in-Chief of the First Air Fleet, known as Kido Butai. On November 26, 1941, First Air Fleet, consisting of six aircraft carriers, the Soryu, the Hiru, the Akagi, the Kaga, the Shokaku, and the Zuikaku, along with two battleships, the Haiyi and the Kurishima, two heavy cruisers, one light cruiser, nine destroyers, and 23 fleet submarines departed from Hitukapu Bay, located at the northern side of Japan. It was a long distance to reach their target. The northern route has carefully chosen because of the weak presence of U.S. air patrols in the northern area of Oahu. On December 6, the fleet was just 600 miles away from the north of Oahu. At 1 a.m. on December 7, 1941, five Japanese midget submarines were released from their mothership towards the harbor's entrance. They were just eight miles away from the entrance. The targets are battleships. At 3.57, minesweeper USS Condor was patrolling the entrance area and spotted some objects heading towards the barber's point. The USS Condor immediately sends the alarm to the destroyer USS Ward, but nothing was found. On the morning of December 7th, the task force was almost 275 miles north of Oahu. At 6 a.m., the first wave of attacks, consisting of Mitsubishi A6M-0 fighter aircrafts, Ayachi D-3A VAL-type dive bombers, and Nakajima Kate high-level bombers and torpedo bombers were aloft from all six carriers. 183 aircraft were airborne during the first wave. At 6.45, the USS Ward had attacked one of the midget submarines. Spotted earlier and warned by the Condor, near to the harbor's entrance, she opened fire with her four-inch guns on it and hit the midget submarine and dropped the depth charges to make sure the sub was sunk. In the defense of the island, the U.S. has a newly operating radar station on the northwest of Oahu. At 7.02, Opana radar station's radar detected incoming Japanese aircraft plane heading towards the island. 
Unfortunately, it was misidentified as a Boeing B-17 coming from the mainland. Back to the carriers. At 7.05, the second wave of attacks has begun. All 167 planes were airborne. It was Sunday morning, December 7, 1941. There were eight battleships at Pearl Harbor. California, Oklahoma, Tennessee, West Virginia, Maryland, Arizona, and Nevada. A repair ship USS Vestal moored near to the USS Arizona. Most of the battleship in Battleship Row were anchored on that day. On the west side of the Ford Island, a Florida-class battleship, USS Utah, was moored. Next to her light cruiser, the USS Raleigh was also moored. To the Navy Yard, a destroyer, USS Shaw, was docked in the auxiliary floating dry dock, the YFD-2. Battleship USS Pennsylvania was also in dry dock number one. Destroyer USS Casson and Downs were also docked with her. Mine layer USS Oglala and light cruiser Helena were also moored in the naval yard. USS Honolulu was moored portside to berth B-21 naval yard. No aircraft carriers were in port that day. The USS Lexington was on its way to deliver dive bombers to the Midway Island, and the USS Enterprise heading back from Wake Island to Pearl Harbor. Commander Mitsuo Fushida led the first wave of attack. He gave the signal to initiate an attack when total surprise was achieved by Japanese aircrafts. At 7.48, Kanehohe Field on the northeast side of Oahu was the first site to come under attack by Zeros and dive bombers. 36 PBYs and a few other aircraft were on the ground in Kanehohe Bay. Due to the lack of anti-aircraft gun on the field, Japanese pilots shot down the many PBYs. 27 of 33 on the ground, or moored in Kanaohe Bay, were destroyed, and the group moved to the next target, Bellows Field. A large group of Zero fighter planes was commencing an attack on the Iwa Field. 35 aircraft have been destroyed out of 51, due to dive bombers and Zero attacks. A group of 19 SBDs from the USS Enterprise aircraft carrier arrived during the attack. They were dodging by the Zeros. At the Wheeler Field, there were 43 modern P-40s and 39 P-36A aircraft on the ground field. 25 dive bombers dropped their bombs on the hangars and destroyed many planes on the ground. At the same time, Hickman Field was also under attack by Japanese Zero fighters and VAL dive bombers, bombed the fighting line and hangars. 12 B-17s also arrived from the mainland and destined for Hickman Field. To avoid Japanese fighter zeros and friendly fire, they spread all over Oahu. Some B-17s were managed to land on the ground. The dive bombers and zeros' main aim was to neutralize the American air power on the ground and took control over the air on Oahu. Commander Murata led to torpedo bombers, split the torpedo bombers' force into two groups. The first group, led by Lieutenant Nagai, proceeded to the west side of Pearl Harbor. At 7.55, Nagai's group commenced attack towards the carrier dock site. However, there were no aircraft carriers present on that day, so they fired six torpedoes towards the USS Utah. She got two hits. A torpedo passed ahead and a second hit near the light cruiser rally. At 7.57, Aichi D-3A Val dive bombers dropped their bombs on the hangar area and seaplane ramp of Ford Island. Nagai took his group towards the nearest ship to the southeastern lock and launched their torpedoes. One torpedo destined towards mine layer Oglala passed under the ship and burst against the cruiser Helena, causing damage to both. Nagai's other pilots made their route to the main targets along Battleship Row. The second group, led by Murata, his group launching their torpedoes towards West Virginia, Oklahoma, and Vestal. At 7.56, two torpedoes destined toward the USS Oklahoma. She was hit by two torpedoes. The third torpedo struck at 8 a.m. A fourth torpedo hit caused her to roll over on her side and slipped underwater. The USS West Virginia took a seven-torpedo hit during the torpedo attack. The torpedo hit caused extensive damage to her. At 8.03, Nevada took a single hit in its bow. She was not moored alongside another battleship off Ford Island and therefore was able to maneuver. The USS California was moored on the southeastern side of Ford Island. 
two torpedoes were dropped from the Nakajima B-5N towards the California and hit the ship at 8.05, one forward and the other further aft. During the attack, the anti-aircraft guns also fired from the battleships and five of the Japanese torpedo bombers were shot down by Americans. At 8.06, three bombs were dropped on the Arizona from high-level bombers, three of them near misses on and around Arizona. At 8.10, the fourth 800 kg bomb dropped from one of the high-level bombers, destined to the Arizona, and it's fallen to the front side turret number two, which caused detonation of the forward magazine. More than 1,177 onboard Arizona crew members were killed due to the massive blast and fire. The powerful explosion of Arizona also damaged the nearby battleship USS Tennessee and USS Vestal ship. At 8.20, Tennessee was hit by two 800 kg bombs and it caused minor damage to her. Lieutenant Commander Shimazaki led the second wave of attack. They have commenced the attack at 8.55. Zero fighter planes were divided into two groups. The first group turned back towards the northeast and headed for Kanahohe and Bellows Field. The Kanahohe Zero groups were further divided into subgroups. One group had attacked fleet plane installations at the Kanahohe Field and then went to Wheeler Field, while other groups continued southward to Bellows Field. At Bellows Field, P-40s were trying to get airborne, but Zero fighters swooped down on them. Two P-40s from the Halawea Field were successfully gotten airborne, and they shot down four Japanese aircraft. At 8.36, west side of Ford Island, seaplane tender USS Curtis sighted a periscope of a Japanese midget submarine and opened fire on it. Destroyer Monogon was sent to hunt for the midget sub. Monagon drops her depth charges and sunk the midget submarine. Lieutenant Tatsuo led 18 aircraft towards the Ford Islands and Shimazaki led the 6 bomber group to the Hickman Field. The bombers make a hit on the Hangar 13 and 15 at the Hickman Field. At 8.54, bombers attacked the Navy Yard dry dock and hit the battleship USS Pennsylvania. Another bomb hit on Destroyer Downs fuel tank damaged to both ships. Due to the heavy fire, Cassin's onboard ammunition was exploded. At 9.05, two crashed planes hit the Curtis and started a fire on her. One of her diver bombers dropped a bomb on her and explodes her below decks. At 9.20, the USS Honolulu got hit from one of the dive bombers, moored portside Navy Yard. The USS Shaw took three hits around 9.25. The uncontrollable fire was spread throughout the ship, which detonates her forward ammunition magazine at 9.30. At 9.44, the attack was over. All the Japanese aircraft turned back to their carriers. By 10.30, Japanese Task Force was withdrawn from the Pacific Fleet to their mainland.